The other day, this guy flipped me off in traffic. Apparently, the 75 miles an hour I was going just wasn't fast enough. And this, so, so this guy let me know it. Only he didn't just give me one finger. He flipped me off with both fingers while keeping both hands on the steering wheel. I mean, the double gun salute. And that takes, that takes skill. It takes practice to do that and still maintain control of your car. And, and the look on his face, the rage, he pulled up right behind me and tailgated me for a while. I mean, you would have thought, you would have thought this mattered. And then traffic began to spread out and, and cars started to pull ahead and he, he began to pass me. And so I thought, well, you know, I'm going to have a little fun with this. So I look over and smile so that as he passes me, you know, he'll, he'll feel the love. And you know what he did when he pulled by me? He goes by me and he doesn't even acknowledge I'm there. He just stares straight ahead. Now, I don't have to know much about him to know that his anger had very little to do with me or the speed we were driving or traffic. That guy was angry long before he got in his car, wasn't he? I mean, you and I see this all the time, and we see it in traffic, but we see it, we see it in the store, we see it at, in the school, we see it at the office, we see it in the home. I mean, there is this low-grade boiling rage that many people carry around with them everywhere they go. There's a story about Jesus in the book of Mark. He's in this confrontation with a group of religious leaders and there's a man in their midst who has an injured hand. And these religious leaders don't think he should heal the man because it would break one of their rules. And so Jesus says to them, he says, well, which is better, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And the scriptures say that they remain silent, that they have nothing to say. His question essentially calls out the hardness of their hearts, and they have no answer for him. And then the Bible says that Jesus looked around at them in anger. Jesus gets angry. Now this story was first told in the Greek language and there's a, there's a subtle nuance to this word anger in the Greek language. It, it's in what's called the aorist tense, which is, a, which is a technical way of saying Jesus' anger is a temporary feeling. It comes on him and then it leaves him. Anger is simply an emotion. It's just your body's way of telling you that your will has been blocked. What you want to happen isn't happening. The problem isn't anger. The problem is what we do with it. It's where we take it. It's where we go with it. The question is, why am I angered? Because my anger is going to lead somewhere.
And so there is a response to anger that is petty and selfish. It's, it's a whole state of being. It's easily offended. It's an, it's an aggression that sits just below the surface and then it expresses itself at the strangest times. There is a response to anger that's essentially all about us, our pride, our ego, all of the ways we work so hard to prop up and protect and defend our selfish little kingdoms. But that isn't what's going on here with Jesus. Jesus has identified himself with an injustice larger than himself. There's something divine about his anger because some things, some things are worth getting angry about. See, some anger is actually healthy and necessary. Which is more disturbing, a God who gets angry or a God who can see exploitation and abuse and injustice and not get angry? I mean, war, violence, somebody using their strength to take advantage of the weakness of another. I mean, God is love, and, and when a human is abused, mistreated, dehumanized, there is going to be divine anger, the kind that identifies with anybody who's being mistreated or harmed. I was, uh, I was out with my wife and some friends one night, and uh, we were coming back at the end of the evening to where I'd parked my car. And I look up ahead, and I see this guy, and he's trying to break into my car. It's obvious he's trying to steal it. And so I start running towards the car, and he looks up and sees me and takes off running down the street. And so I get up to my car, and I check it out, and it's okay. He hadn't gotten in. He hadn't broken anything. And I'm standing there next to my car, and I look down the street, and he's just turned the corner from the edge of the street, and he's headed onto this bridge that goes So I get up to my car, and I check it out, and it's okay. He hadn't gotten in. He hadn't broken anything. And I'm standing there next to my car, and I look down the street, and he's just turned the corner from the edge of the street, and he's headed onto this bridge that goes back into another part of the city. And, and I watch him for a second, and then I thought, I'm going to chase him. So I take off running after this guy. I get to the other street around the corner, and I'm now on the bridge, and I'm actually catching him. I mean, I am running like a man possessed, and I'm closing the gap. I'm getting closer and closer and closer to him. And the thought uh, occurs to me, what is my plan here? And, and I'm getting closer and closer and closer. And at one point, the guy looks back at me. I, I don't think this is what he expected. And, and I get right up behind him, and now I'm at a full sprint, and I'm a couple feet behind him, and for some reason, I yell at the top of my lungs, right at the back of his head, you're mine, I've got you in my sights. Like, like, like who talks like this? Like, I've got you in my sights? And then it occurs to me, nobody this slow is traveling without a weapon, and so I stop chasing him, and he runs out to the end of the bridge and then disappears into the trees. and. I find myself standing there on the bridge with adrenaline pumping through my body. I mean, there is this unbelievable energy that anger can stir up within us. Have you ever gotten so angry that you scared yourself? If you've gotten so angry that you said things and you, you couldn't believe you were saying them, you're like, where did this come from? I had no idea that was inside of me. Have you ever gotten so mad that you broke something? I mean, you, you can find somebody who's depressed, tired, exhausted. You, you get them angry, and it's like rocket fuel. I mean, it is unbelievable energy and stimulus. I mean, there's power within us when we're angry that can, fright, that can frighten us. What does Jesus do with his anger? The, the scripture says that he looks around at the religious leaders, and then he says to the man with the injured hand, stretch out your hand, and the man stretches out his hand, and Jesus heals him. Jesus' anger leads to an act of healing and restoration. His anger, it, it, it increases the peace of the world. It leads to this good deed that makes things better. What does your anger lead to? Does your anger increase the peace around you? I mean, does your anger make the world a better place?
often when we're talking about what we're going to give our lives to, we ask the question of ourselves and those around us. You know, we say, what do you love? What is it that when you do it, you feel alive? You think, man, I could, I could do this forever. I was made for this. And so when we're talking about, you know, calling and mission and vocation and purpose, what we're going to give our life to, one of the questions we often ask is, what do you love? But there's another question we can ask. What makes you angry? What is it that when you see it, you, you think that's wrong, somebody should do something about that? Well, what is it that when you see it, it stirs something within you that somebody should devote themselves to that? Somebody should make a difference there. Somebody should help them. Maybe the somebody is you. We need to listen to our anger because God may be using it to get our attention. I saw this woman absolutely lose it in a restaurant recently because she was having to wait for her food longer than she thought was acceptable. While that very night, hundreds of millions of people around the world would go to bed hungry. We live in a world where people get angry about things that do not matter. While at the same time, people don't get angry about things that do matter. Go to a game and watch the way that people behave. You know that guy, the one who gets really angry with the referee? I don't think his anger has that much to do with the ref. He's, he hasn't given his life to a bigger cause, a larger fight. He was made to give his life to something bigger, something more beautiful, something that helps make the world a better place. And he's wasting it, and he knows it, even if he wouldn't say it that way. So he goes to the game, and he shouts, and he boos, and his face turns red, and he gets all upset with the referee. But the truth is, some people are looking for a fight because they aren't in one. The people I know who are most engaged with the suffering of the world, the people I know who have given themselves to big, beautiful, healing kinds of causes, they're, they're generally free from that irrational, petty kind of anger. They don't fall into the trap of that low-grade rage that actually increases the brokenness of the world. Are you one of those people? Or maybe, actually, maybe we should ask your friends, or your husband, or your wife, or your boyfriend, or your girlfriend, or your coworkers. Uh, we should ask your kids, because they'll tell us, because they know. If you're one of those people, the question is, some people say, well, you know, I just have a temper. No, no, no. You have things going on inside of you that you aren't dealing with. The question is whether or not you will have the courage to go searching for where that anger comes from and why you respond the way that you do. The question is whether you want to be free because there will always be things to complain about and there will always be people who need your help. To become more like Jesus, we need to embrace the simple truth that we were made to give ourselves to a cause bigger than ourselves, a cause that increases the peace in the world, a cause, a purpose, a task that makes the world a better place. So may you become aware of your anger. May you learn to channel it, to focus it, direct it into something beautiful. And may it fuel sacred acts of healing and restoration. <laughs>